Welcome. This is Into the Writer's Cave. I'm your host, Patricia Sargent. On this episode, we're going into the Writer's Cave with award-winning author Keith Thomas Walker, who is known as the master of romantic suspense and urban fiction. So, what was the first book that you read that made you want to be a storyteller? The first book I read was, that, well, that made me want to tell stories. I was, uh, that's a hard question because I read a lot of books and I've known, I felt like I've known since middle school that I wanted to be a professional writer. But I would think um, it was Cujo by Stephen King. And, the reason, <laughs> I know, and I was way too young, to, I was way too young to read that book when I read it. And I How read old are you? I was in the seventh grade and maybe six, but I was too young to read that book. And it was a monster of a book. That book had over 300 pages. And the font was very small, like 11 or eight. I don't know. It was small. It was a paperback, a trade paperback. And it was just such a big book. My mom was a Stephen King fan and she would just be sitting there reading his books. And I'm like, how are you reading such a big book? That book is as thick as a Bible. <laughs> and, I, and I asked her if I could read one, and she was hesitant. And finally, my voracious appetite for reading, she realized she had to feed it. So I uh, went to Cujo, and I read that book, and it was so um, it was so scary. And I remember <laughs> um, at the time I used to catch the bus home from school, and sometimes I go to practice for sports, and it would be late. And I lived in a bad neighborhood; there were a lot of stray dogs. And I was afraid of dogs for years because of that book. <laughs> and it occurred to me after reading it that this mother trapped in a car with just their son. And this story could have been told by other writers in like 20 pages. But the psychological <laughs> torment that Stephen King produced in that book, and he made the reader feel it. And every moment you're in that car with this woman, and you were waking up, and that dog's still out there, and your child is sick. and all of these emotions and heartache and fear and dread and terror. And I just, I became amazed that this man that I would never meet could cause me to feel all of this just by reading something that he wrote. And that, that was an amazing experience to me. And I was I always looked to do that because for a reader to, a writer to make you feel like that, just, just, make you feel every emotion he truly wants you to feel. That was, that was a wonderful thing. And it was, it was almost godlike the way he did it. And it just, it just catapulted me to want to achieve similar success with my writing. I love the way you put that, that you said the way the story made you feel. Right. Be because I think that's why people enjoy reading so much. It's because of the way they feel when they're going through that story. Right. It's what? a talent. It's not something that any writer can do. It's, it takes skill and talent to put the words on the page in a way that if you want them to feel emotion, they will feel it. If you want them to laugh, they will laugh. If you want the reader to cry, they will cry. And that's not an easy thing, but writers who are able to do it successfully those are the writers that I love to read. And those are the readers that I hope to reach. I, I, my goal is to do that with every single book. Oh, fantastic. Have you ever met Stephen King? Never. And I know I'm not never going to. Well, I might. I don't know. Anything's possible. But he, he I don't know if he would care at this point, but um, he influenced me to the fullest. And I've only written one book in his um, fashion, and that, that was Sleeping with the Strangler. So that was my that was my ode to Stephen King. That was my tribute. In that yeah, that that story sounds really great. When when you're writing, is there like a first reader that you have in your head who might give you some feedback on the plot or the characters that you're writing? Do you have like a first reader? I do have a first reader, and um, I wish I could say that I would go to this person to help me plot or to help me do my characters prior to, but I don't. I do that independently. But my first reader is my wife, and I always read, and I, and I don't let her read it on her own. She hates that because she can't stand suspense, and she's always wanting to just give it me, because I've already read a chapter or two to her. She wants the book, and I'm like, I'm not giving you the book. 
And the reason I don't is because I want to know the suspense is working, but mainly I want to read it because when it comes out of my mouth and I hear it and she hears it and I can watch her reactions, everything just live, that really helps. But she does, she's the first one to point out, okay, well, why would they do that? Or wait, that's, are you sure you want to do that? She's the first one to point that out. But she helps me so much just by allowing me to read it to her, even though it drives her crazy because the suspense kills her. And she, she would, she would die for me to just give her the book, but I won't do it. So it may take two weeks because we we have both busy schedules, and if we could pull out an hour a day, it would take a, a minute to finish the book. But she's always there. Oh, that's fantastic! And I love that she she doesn't automatically approve everything. She's like, no, no. well, I don't know about this. <laughs> right? No, no. She that's doesn't. that's what you want. Yes, yes. Yeah. I don't want a yes, man. It's gonna say that's great. Keep going. I don't. I don't want that. And she's right. So I appreciate her input. So when you are plotting your stories, mm -hmm. do you start with the character, the the plot, the location? What What's your impetus? I always start with the character. Well, no, I start with the synopsis, and I know what the story's going to be. So I'll write the synopsis, and then I'll get to the characters, and I'll do a, a pretty detailed character outline before I'll start the book. If I have a character, a main character in particular, I'll, I'll want to know what I want them to look like and career and family and I'll start not a full family tree but I'll know if they have a relationship if they have children what are they involved in so by the time I start the book this particular character all of the characters in fact will their um, lifestyles will be pretty flushed out and also my outline will be flushed out pretty well before I start the book I've never gotten anywhere in any book where I'm like, okay, what are right now? That writer's block situation never happens because I do so much planning before I start. So things happen, obviously, when you're writing characters. They'll do stuff and you're writing and all of a sudden the character will do something and you're like, why did, did he do that? That was not in my outline. But you got to let the character be free as well. So if they want to do it, if, they, if this character is compelled to do something that I did not plan for them to do, I'll have to roll with it. And if I have to rewrite the rest of the book because this character just went, went, went totally left field on me, then that's what I'll do. I'll rewrite the rest of the book and let that character be free. So it's kind of organized, but still free flowing at the same time. Now you already mentioned that you do um, research for mm -hmm. your stories. Good storytellers like you, they base their fiction on fact. Do you have any particular anecdotes that you can share with us about the um, some of the research you've done for your books? Um, when it comes to research, I don't do as much as you would think. I, um, I've only done like major research on a couple of books. And one was the Brick House series because it was about a family that was into construction and uh, contracting. And that was a field that I wasn't very familiar with. And I did want to highlight some of the beauty in the works that they built, the architectural things that they did, and the tools involved with the trade, because um, Cora liked to play with her tools, her big tools, <laughs> the jackhammer in particular. So I did need to do some research on contracting and uh, construction projects and architecture, because I wanted to highlight some of the beautiful things that they had created. Um, but, and also, the only other book that I did that level of research was uh, election day because I wanted to that was a book that I wrote about um, it was a book set in the 70s early 70s where segregation was still a thing in in schools and um, I wanted to make sure I didn't have any of the the uh, the dates wrong as far as when segregation ended officially and some of the um, steps that were taken prior to to get them to that point so i did do uh, research on that book but generally speaking i don't like to do a lot of research because the reader doesn't want to be inundated with facts they just want a great story and most great stories don't require a lot of research unless you have to be factual with you know different things which generally is not the case Several of your stories take place in the same fictitious small town. Not several, all of them. 
<laughs> All of my stories take place in Overbrook Meadows, Texas. And once again, that's a shout out to Stephen King. Uh, <laughs> Stephen King grew up in uh, Maine. I forget the city he actually grew up in, but all of his early stories, the horror stories, they took place in this fictitious city called Bangor, Maine. And this city had a lot of um, a lot of um, trademarks and a lot of landmarks that were consistent throughout his early books. So um, my books take place in Overbrook Meadows, Texas, which is a fictitious city that's l loosely based on Fort Worth, Texas, with my hometown. So um, there's a lot of land. Anyone from Fort Worth who reads my books recognizes it immediately because the streets are the same and landmarks are the same. And, and I've kept that going throughout my books. I don't, I'm not sure if I've written a book outside of Overbrook Meadows. They leave sometimes and go to different cities, different states, different countries, but most of the characters are from Overbrook Meadows. And um, the cool thing about that is once I established fictitious places, I could reuse them like with the Finley sisters' oath of romance, they went to Finley High, which is in the Meadows. So Finley High has been a theme since that was my fourth or fifth book. So when I got ready to write my young adult series in high school, obviously they had to go to Finley High. You see, I was going to say, I love that because it's like every time you open a Keith Thomas Walker book, you're right back in the same neighborhood saying uh, hi to familiar places and it's, I love that. And the other cool thing about that is characters can reoccur. So although I may not be writing a series, if I'm still in Finley High, you may run across a previous character from a Finley, a book that took place in Overbrook Meadow. So it's like going home every time you open yeah. the book. You're back at Finley, you're back in Overbrook Meadows. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for all of the time you've given us, Keith. Before we set you free, <laughs> okay, is there a, something in particular that you would like to say to your readers, old, new? Um, I would just love to invite anyone who's watching this, whether you read my books or not, to go check my catalog. Maybe there's a book you're missing. If you've never read any of my books, please go to my website. So uh, keithwalkerbooks.com. Click on my books. I've got a lot of them out there. And I'm positive that no matter what genre you're into, you would enjoy my books. I'm a, uh, go to Amazon, check out my reviews if you're doubtful. I have a lot of accolades and they didn't come easy. I worked really hard to produce the volume of writing I've written, I've produced. And I, I think you should give me a try. I think I've, I've rarely met anyone who's read one of my books for the first time and said, oh yeah, I didn't like it. I, that's something that I never hear, unless they just don't tell me. But for the most part, most of the people who are introduced to my books for the first time always come back for more. And I always get messages, I met you here, I read this book, what do you have next? And these conversations just keep going and going. So check out some of my work, old or new. I think you'll love me. So can they also uh, learn more about you on social media? Uh, yeah, you can reach out to me on Facebook if you want to see a little peeks into my private life. On my website, I have my biographical information, uh, Twitter, you know, Instagram. I'm everywhere. <laughs> and on my website, I have links on a, a home page for all of my social media access. Terrific. Well, Keith, um, you just told us how we can find out more about you. And I really appreciate your taking the time to, from your writing schedule to chat with us. Oh, and thanks. thank you to all of our viewer readers for joining us on Into the Writer's Cave. I'm Patricia Sargent. You can find out about my books at patriciasargent.com. Thank you again for joining us. Until next time, happy reading. All right. Thanks, everybody. Great to meet you.